Hi, I'm Hope from Hope Broidery, and today I'm going to show you how I make patterns out of my embroidery designs using the Procreate app for the iPad. Before we get started, I want to make sure you know that this tutorial is intended for you to use with your own original ideas. This tutorial will be useful for you if you're wanting to make a pattern to sell to other people so that they can recreate your work, or if you're needing to replicate one of your own designs and want to be as precise as possible. I'm going to show you how to copy your design for transferring purposes, meaning a black and white outline that will make it easy for somebody to transfer to fabric, as well as how to make a colorful guide so that whomever is using your pattern has an easier time figuring out which colors go where. One thing I will not cover in this video are specific ways to format your final pattern. It's really important that you also play around and come up with your own unique format for patterns, just like you've played around and designed your own original embroidery designs. All right, obviously the first thing you wanna do is open up the Procreate app, um, which you can buy in the App Store. Here is an example, I've got this open already, an example of a free pattern that I have on my website. So I'm gonna show you how to do the pattern for transfer, which is the black and white design, as well as how to color it in. You do not have to do the color guide if you don't want to, um, but if you do, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'll go back to my gallery here. Now to choose a size for a new project, you click on this arrow and you can choose any kind of canvas size you want. If you click on this button here, it's gonna let you choose um, to create your own size. Whenever I'm just doing the tracing of my pattern, I like to choose square because my embroideries are all in circles, so it fits really nicely. When you open up your canvas, you can move it around with your fingers, you know, as you're drawing and make it bigger or smaller. And if you already have a photo of your project, you can click on this gear icon and then click on insert a photo. I don't have a photo yet, so I'm gonna click on take a photo. And I'm gonna take a photo of my hoop. I'll try to make it as straight on as possible. Like that. Okay, so then I'm gonna click on use photo and that'll automatically insert my photo to my canvas. Then, while it's selected, which you can tell it is because of that blue arrow, I'm gonna move it with my fingers and make sure it fills up that whole space. It just is easier for me when I do it this way. And then I can deselect by touching that arrow again. So now I'm ready to trace. Okay, are you ready for this? We're gonna learn about layers. <laughs> this little button right here looks like two papers layered on top of each other, and that's where your layers live. Right now, I only have one layer, which is the photo that I just took. So I'm gonna click this Add button to add a blank layer on top of that one. And you can select and deselect your layers with these little check marks. So if I deselect that photo layer, the photo goes away. And then I can reselect it like that. Now, I will probably, during the course of this video, mess up and draw on the wrong layer, and you'll see how I fix that. But to choose which layer you wanna draw on, you just wanna make sure you're in the right layer over here. So if I wanna draw on this layer, I need to, you know, I need to be clicked on there. And then if I wanna draw on this layer, I need to be clicked on there. So that when I deselect that, the image still stays. Another thing that you're gonna see me do a lot um, is tap on my screen. So you can use the stuff up here to do undo and redo, um, or you can just use your hands. So if I use two fingers, that undoes what I just did. And if I use three fingers, that redoes what I just did. Here's our erase button, and that'll let you erase what you're doing. So 
So again, I can go doop, 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 drawing, 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 two fingers to undo, three fingers to redo. If you need to delete a layer, you can swipe on it and click delete like that. Okay, so I've got my layer on top of my design. One thing I've noticed is that it's easier for me to do the outline if I make this picture a little bit um, more see-through. So I'm gonna select the layer with my picture and then click this magic wand, click opacity, and then you can slide to adjust how opaque that image is. So you want it to be um, easy enough to where, to where you can still see it, but light enough to where you can see the lines that you're about to start drawing. So that looks about right to me. Then I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm gonna select layer two because that's the one I'm gonna be drawing on. Then I'm gonna go over to this little paintbrush icon. So your Procreate app comes with tons of different um, brushes and you can use whichever brush you think works best for you. If you wanna use something that looks more like a pencil, you can go over here to sketching and pick a pencil. If you want something that looks like an ink pen, you can use that. They even have, you know, fun things like charcoal pens, whatever you wanna use. But what I use is in the calligraphy section and it is this monoline because it's just simple, it's nice, thick. I like it. So over here is where we'll change the size of our brush. And I'll go about right here. And this is where you're going to choose what color you wanna use, this little dot. So if I change it to this color, that dot changes as well. If I change it to this color, it changes over there. You can change your colors by using the disc and moving it around by selecting things from palettes Play around with it. I'm just gonna use black for now and I'll show you more about color in just a little bit. So make sure you're in the right layer and now it's simply a matter of tracing your design. So let me show you a couple of tricks. One thing is that I like to get in pretty close to where I'm drawing. Now, let's say you have a circle but you can't draw a circle perfectly the iPad will do that for you, or a straight line. So for example, if I have a straight line that I need to draw, like over here, and I'm not good at that, it will create a line for me. So what you do is just draw, hold it, and it snaps. And the same is true for other shapes. So for example, here I'm gonna put a circle. I'm gonna hold it. Then I'm going to go to edit shape because sometimes I'm so bad at drawing circles that it makes it an ellipse instead of a circle. So then I can click on circle and it turns it into a perfect circle like that. And I'm just gonna trace around my pattern. Keep in mind, um, that this is the one people are gonna want to um, transfer onto their paper or to their fabric. So for example, over here, this is a woven wheel. And if you're a stitcher, you know that you can't just draw a circle. People aren't gonna know um, how to do that. So what I do is make the spokes for them, which I can sort of see in this one. I can't always see it when I do that. Gotta redo that. Just adding in all the things that I know people are going to need for the pattern to work for them. Oops.
Now, a lot of this is sort of a use your best judgment type situation. So for example, this hoop has a ton of French knots just sort of scattered everywhere. So I have to decide, do I want to have them transfer over the French knots exactly, or will that kind of um, mess up the pattern? So for a pattern like this, I might include in the instructions that you just wanna fill in the gaps with French knots, and then the only guide that I do are the ones that are scattered out here. Those are a little bit harder, I know, for people to decide where to put. But that's a use your best judgment situation. And of course, I haven't done this yet, but I like to do the outline of the hoop so that, you know, if they're printing this off, they can figure out if it's gonna fit in their hoop before they transfer it over. And I'll go back to here and click circle so that it's right. So that was pretty quick, right? If I deselect, the picture layer, I can see if it looks okay or if it looks like I'm missing anything. This one looks fine. And that would be the image that I would include in my pattern for somebody to then copy onto their fabric and start using the other instructions to make it and all, all that. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I need to make a color version um, where I can show people where the colors go, um, which colors to use, all of that sort of thing. So let me give you a little intro into how to do that. So I like to do that in a totally separate file, or not file, sorry, layer. So I'm going to deselect the layer I just made, click the Add button, and make sure I have my um, picture in there. Now for this, I like to make sure I'm using this you know, exact color, so I'm going to Select that layer, go back to my magic wand, go back to opacity and slide all the way up. Then I'll go back to my new layer. And here's how you select colors. You're gonna take one finger and hold it on your um, screen. And as you move it around, you can see that the, initial, the color I have right now is black and the top is moving as I move my finger over the design. So I'm gonna try to find a pink that looks right, that looks about like the right color. Let's say you're having, that's actually a good one, but let's say you're having a hard time finding one because you know how fabric, look at all those different colors. You can really zoom it in really far and find that exact color that you want. So now, you can see that I've got that um, color selected. And now when I draw, it's gonna be in that color. Make sure I'm in the right layer. And I'm gonna start with a circle. Okay. Now I'm gonna just redraw the design using the colors. So I have, let's start with these petals. I'm gonna do those in this color. That was not precise. Okay. Remember when you would use MS Paint and you had to make sure you fill, you had all your lines connected so that when you used the fill tool, it wouldn't cover the whole drawing. Okay, it's the same way in Procreate. Procreate is basically fancy paint. So I've got my petals drawn and I want them to be completely that color. What I'm gonna do is hold onto this color. Oops, undo, redo, reselect this color. I'm going to tap this and drag it. So tap and drag and then it will fill that space. If it doesn't fill that space, that means that you have missed a little connection. So I'll show you an example of what I mean. Let's say I take the eraser tool and I 
make a thing like that, and then I try to fill it in. Then it's gonna fill in even that middle part, you see that? Okay. So I've got my petals, then I'm gonna need to do this color. I don't like that. So as you're picking out your colors to um, use as your color guide, it's not important that it be the exact um, color of your floss because the color is gonna change depending on the lighting and which part of the floss, all that. What matters is that you use the same color for every piece. So for example, since I grabbed that color for the middle part, I know that's the same color I'm gonna need to use for this French knot right here. For this line right here. And that way, when you make your color guide, you can say, hey, this bright white color is actually this color or that color. You see what I'm saying? You all know what I mean. Okay, and then I also, okay, let's see here. I'm gonna start doing these greens. So I like this one, this light green. I'm gonna select that. I'm going to drop this, this, oops. I'm gonna show you a trick here in a second. All right, so let's say that I want to draw these leaves on, but I'm like, oh no, I drew the stems first, so now the color, it's gonna be off because I'm gonna end up, let me choose a dark green so I can show you an example of how I can get messed up. If I go like this, it's gonna cut into that and it won't look right. Here's how you fix that. Select your layer, add, and then if you tap this layer, you can move it around so that you can move it so that it's underneath the layer you just made. And then I can draw and it'll go underneath the stuff I just drew. So that's how I'm gonna do these leaves. I'm gonna go up. And then it doesn't color in or you know mess up the lines that I just made. Procreate really is like fancy paint, if you ever played with that program as a kid. Okay, so I've got that part down, and then that dark green is also. So another example of that would be here. I kinda need to start right here, so if I do it in this layer that's underneath there, then I won't mess up those petals I just made. So I'll go like this, this, Okay. I also need to make this little wrench knot. And I'm gonna choose this orange. I'm going to go circle. Fill that in. I'm gonna select this color because I know in here there are lines. So in the pattern I might say shade with one strand or something like that. But that'll give people a visual of what color they need to use when they do that. You know, what you include or don't include in your pattern is really up to you. The most important thing is to tell people what you're including. So if you're selling a pattern and it's just the black and white outline, you can sell that. Just say it's just the black and white outline. If you want to include diagrams of how to do every stitch 
or a video tutorial, you can do that too. Just put that, put that in the listing. If you wanna say, I don't know the colors I made this with, just find some that kinda look the same, you can say that. But if you have the exact colors, like this is DMC number XYZ, I don't know this color. Um, you can say, I have a DMC color guide, a Sublime Stitching color guide, whatever. I know that, you know, some, everybody has their own way of doing patterns. The most important thing is that you are honest about what comes in a pattern so that people can make an informed decision. For me, all I really need, if there's a black outlined embroidery that I wanna make, all I really need is the drawing and I can figure out the rest. Um, if it's something like thread painting, which I don't really do, then yeah, I might be looking for a pattern that gives me more explanation. So just give people enough information so that they can make their own informed decision about whether or not it'll work for them. See how that also worked for a curve? Watch. Curve, snap. Okay, now I'm gonna add in all my little French knots. So I need to get this pink, bright pink color, which is almost the same color as the, um, fabric so I have to make sure I don't choose the same one or else it'll disappear. Usually when I'm showing French knots I just do dots you know to show people what it looks like. Then I need that yellow, 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 dot, 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 dot. Then I need that orange. And the reason I'm including more details in the colored in version is because this is the version that people use um, to get it to look right. This isn't the transferring version where you just need to know where to put the lines to guide your stitching. This is where um, this is where I can look and see which colors I used for everything. Okay. Oops, I forgot the light green French knots. Now, now I have, right now, and you might have more than this, I have two layers with all the colored in stuff. So what I'm gonna need to do is take my fingers and smush those together to merge them. Like that, and now it's all one layer. I'm going to select that fabric color so that I can then fill the whole hoop with that. But I do have some gaps, you see, like here, 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 and I could do a fill in, but something that actually works easier for me is if I add another layer and put it on the bottom, make sure my brush size is big, and then I just paint behind it, basically, until everything is covered. Okay, then I'm going to merge those two like that. And if I deselect my photo layer, now I have a nice colorful guide. So what I like to do is, as you can see in here, I'll include the black and white guide and the color guide in my pattern. And here, uh, let me show you how to do that. So let's say I just want to select this and put it in a new document. I'm going to create a document that is eight and a half by 11 which is the size of paper. I'm gonna go over here, make sure I have that layer selected, go to my gear icon, click copy, go back to my eight and a half by 11 thing, and then click paste, and then it'll go in my document, and I can make it as big or as small as I want. 
Now another thing you could do, let's say you don't wanna build your actual pattern in Procreate. You can send these files to yourself via email and then um, put them in PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, whatever works best for you um, to format your pattern. And you can do that by hitting share. And then usually what I like to do is send it to myself as a PNG. Don't share PNG files because if you haven't merged things correctly, then it's gonna send you like 13 different, like every single layer as a separate file. But if you just want the thing that you've got selected, click PNG and then you can email it to yourself. And then what I would do is deselect that, select the black and white one, and then I would share that PNG with myself. So that's how I do it. If you have any questions or if I need to do a follow-up or anything, um, let me know. <laughs> and happy pattern making.